My name is Neil Gofton, I'm lead track engineer at RSSB. Um, we're also responsible for railway group standards and railway industry standards. I'm going to open the discussion this afternoon on X and Ys around platform position. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through some of the context around why platform position is important. Hopefully nothing new to anybody, but a bit of a recap. I'm going to talk briefly about the standards, what they say. Um, and then going to go on to talk a little bit about stepping and gauging in the conflict. I'm going to finish with some final thoughts on stepping and access. To start with some of the um, some of the context. Well, um, as we know, platform train interface is one of the, the biggest risks to passengers on the um, on the network. They're accounted for up to four to five fatalities a year, and the problem's not going away. As you see in, the, in this um, safety um, uh, data, actually there's a quite significant number of incidents resulting in major injuries and minor injuries at the interface. Um, there's a lot of factors that influence what passengers see at the platform train interface, but obviously platform position is, is, is one of the key key factors. Surely it's easy, you, you put your platform in the, in the right place, you design your rolling stock and bring them in to meet that, that, that platform and um, everyone's a winner, but unfortunately not quite the case. Um, we have legacy infrastructure, um, much of which originated from different railway organisations with different practices, and it's something that's, that's been changing uh, um, over time. Um, we have a significant number of curved platforms in our railway, and, and actually some, some quite tight platforms in places. Um, and this obviously brings conflict, um, conflict between the need to provide clearance between the vehicles and the, and the platforms, but also to provide practical stepping between the um, vehicles at a multitude of door positions along, along the train. We have set standard platform dimensions that aren't particularly new, uh, 915 for height and 730 for offset. But we actually know from the platform train interface strategy published a couple of years ago, that actually very few of those platforms are where they should be. Only 30% in the correct range for platform height and only 22% in the correct range for offset and only 7% in the, in the correct range for both. So it's, it's no small problem. But the standards haven't replied retrospectively. There's been no um, no branch of work or funding to go and put all these right in one big big hit. But of course, there's no, no funding to do this. So it's a step by step approach to try and improve um, this position. We also have mixed traffic uh, on our railway. We have um, suburban services with mostly stopping, with third and two thirds door positions. We have regional services with um, some stopping in a range of door positions. Intercity with trains passing through at speed, which we need to provide clearance for. And freight with range of speeds and, and, and container traffic. So what we have is, a, is quite a high risk, important interface to manage, with a real mixed bag of, of infrastructure to, to live with that we've got to try and um, address. Um, and a mixture of vehicles. And it comes down to the individual projects to try and pick these up as, as they come along through the renewals and, and enhancement <coughs> program. So moving on to standards, well, uh, briefly, why do we have standards firstly? So, to manage interfaces, um, to achieve compatibility, um, platform train interface being a key one, key area, to be cost effective, to avoid repeating development work and, and doing things uh, again and again, and also to help manage safety, to use best practice <coughs> to avoid known errors. Many of you have probably seen this diagram before. So the framework for standards through from legislation at the top right down through to company standards and rail standards at the bottom. I'm going to talk mostly around the requirements say for platforms in the in the top half of that pyramid, so TSI and, and railway group standard requirements. But often lower down the framework you go, you get more detail in, in, in the various documents, and actually often those documents can provide best practice and codes of practice to achieve requirements higher up that pyramid. So what I say for platforms, well the TSI says that the target platform position should be 550 um, for height, um, 760 or, or 760, um, and the target offset should be according to the structure gauges in the European gauging documents. Well, that's not terribly practical for the, for the UK, um, without platforms around 900 and, and um, our issue be closer, etc. So we actually have two specific cases in the TSI, one for platform height and one for platform offset. And these both refer to our national technical rules. So it's 7016 for height uh, and 7073 for, for offset, which is generally around 730, but it's increased the title curvatures. So as we were. 
So in the current standard, we have um, a 915 millimetre dimension for height, um, but it's a one-sided tolerance. Um, so it gives us a range 890 to 915 to achieve. But actually what we want, in terms of the high-risk interface, we want to be as close to that 915 <coughs> as we possibly can to minimise the, the resultant step to passengers. And obviously designing to a one-sided tolerance usually would mean that the nominal platform position would end up being lower than the 915. <coughs> So it's been talked about in the past around adding a positive tolerance to the 915 dimension and uh, enabling a, a little bit extra for, for construction. <coughs> and we've talked about how we can apply this um, 10 millimetres and this has been incorporated into the new, uh, the current revision to 7016 at the moment. So following an industry workshop um, in May 2016, a number of options were, were considered as to how we could apply a positive tolerance. And that workshop agreed on a, pro a proposal what that proposal said was we want to retain the 915 as a non nominal height, <coughs> so we'll, we'll have a, a design range for um, a design tolerance for platforms of 900 minus 15 um, plus zero. But what we'll incorporate is the additional 10 millimetre available for build and maintain. That still retains the nominal stepping uh, reference point of 915. But there's obviously implications for gauging because you add that extra 10 millimetre onto the platform you then got to think about um, your, your, your clearance categories. So where you apply the additional 10 millimetres, you actually take the 10 millimetres off the individual clearance categories. But there's implications for certain rolling stock because we know that there are vehicles out there that actually it's a struggle to design a compliant um, platform position to um, even down at the low, low end of the current tolerance range. So what's been proposed is to actually retain an additional 10 mil at the bottom end for <coughs> platforms where you've got certain vehicles operating. To try and illustrate this, the current standards on the left hand side effectively allow a 915 to 890 range <coughs> for design and, and construction. <coughs> what the proposal um, incorporates into the new revision of the standard will then say, well, you've got your 915 to 900 for design, you've got an extra 10 millimetre at the top end for um, construction, um, enabling you to design closer to the 915. <coughs> And, but you still retain down to the 890 where you've got specific problem vehicles that um, prevent you from achieving the, your design. And that standard goes for approval at Infrastructure Standards <coughs> Committee next week and everything crossed uh, should be published in June, subject to approval. I want to pick up on a couple of terms we have within, um, within the standard. We talk about reference track design position in 7016. But in 7073 we talk about a main, maintained position of the track. I think there's subtle differences between the two, but actually my interpretation is actually they, in most scenarios they can consider to be the same thing. It's effectively where that track should be. And this is what's important for establishing X and Ys. You want those X and Ys established against where the track should be, not where the track actually is. We also talk about 7073 about the effective position of the track. And this is effectively that window where the track could credibly occupy during its maintenance cycle. And that's important for clearance assessment because you need to know that actually where you're putting it and where it can potentially move within, its, within the maintenance framework, it, you're not going to have um, clearance problems. What that does mean is you could actually, the platform could at any time occupy a space outside of the compliance window during its maintenance cycle. So just to emphasise, the platform should be located relative to the reference design, design position. The tolerances on, on, on the platform position are relative to this datum, not, not relative to the, the, the actual track position. The track will move during the maintenance cycle, as I said. And it's also very important to be clear what the datum is you're using, particularly in measurement, because actually if you're taking measurements off the, the, the track as is, you need to make adjustment to the, to the reference design position. <coughs> Also put in around um, something in around under platform recess. Quite often at um, RSSB, people, projects come to us for seeking deviations <coughs> to reduce the the um, size of the platform recess. Um, perhaps unsurprisingly, given that it's 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 significantly easier and far more financially viable to uh, adjust coper position and, and, and sacrifice some of the recess to achieve compliant X and Ys. But I would point out that a couple of years ago, T1062 project actually. Um, reviewed and evaluated and demonstrated the continued value of that, that recess, both in terms of <coughs> rollaway position for people um, falling onto the track, but also access for emergency services. So it's still been valid there as a valid requirement. But I think what projects often struggle to do is actually demonstrate 
um, the change in risk profile from changing uh, that recess dimension. Because actually, what, although in, in many projects are actually changing the configuration of the platform itself, improving cross falls, improving X and Y dimensions, and reduce, re reducing the resultant stepping, but actually often unable to communicate the fact that um, although the consequence of, of incident of someone finding themselves on track is, is made worse, actually potentially the likelihood may have been made better. Uh, the, the likelihood may have been reduced um, as a result of some of the other track works. So I think it's just I put, put it in there as something not to forget about. <coughs> Standards are regularly reviewed. Um, the TSI is reviewed by the European Ra Railway Agency. Um, ENs are reviewed by the relevant standard bodies, SEN, SENELEC and ETSI through their working groups. But at the bottom, the important bit I wanted to highlight is actually through RSSB, we have a regular um, review period, five-year review period for all, all our standards. And actually, that's where you come in, because actually you all have a, uh, an opportunity to input to the standards review cycle. So when we, when we publish a standard, we go through 12-month and five-year review periods and we assess whether it's fit for purpose. And we take into account legislation, uh, R&D output, industry feedback, deviations. We go through, if it is fit for purpose, we put it back into the catalogue. If it's not fit for purpose, we go through a drafting process, take on industry consultation, address the comments as appropriate and publish the standard. And what I've highlighted in pink there is actually every opportunity that you have through um, the work that you do, through deviations you might uh, apply for, and actually just general feedback to influence what's actually in the standard. So if you spot something that's wrong or could be improved upon, please do feed into the process. Stepping versus gauging. Um, well, I've put up there the, the, the current dimensions shown within railway group standards. Um, the pink's what we have in railway group standards. The blue hash is, is what's currently in the PRM TSI. And what's important to remember that actually the, it's the requirement of the vehicle to achieve the stepping, conditions, stepping dimensions against the standard platform position. It's not for us as infra infrastructure engineers to achieve the stepping uh, requirement with the platform. The PRM TSI includes a step down onto the train but doesn't include oversail. But actually again we have a specific case for the PRM TSI which refers to our national technical rules as an option. And our national technical rules do include oversell, but don't include, don't include a step down. And actually, in this scenario, either space is, is, is permitted. But as I said, for an infrastructure project, the requirement is to achieve the track position um, for height and offset. The stepping is of interest because you need to understand what you're doing in terms of the risk profile and how you're changing the risk at that station. But actually, managing the resultant stepping is the... the um, responsibility of the train operator and the, and the station operator. And it's important to remember that rolling stock may change, so of course it's the right thing to do to, to hit the target platform position, because actually that influence is all rolling stock on the network, not just those operating on that particular <coughs> route. But thinking back to the, the window of compliance, actually it's important to remember as well that positive clearance is, 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 is a requirement, normal clearances are not. Um, there's always the option to potentially use um, less than normal clearances to try and get closer to the 915 uh, 730 dimension. Um, it's also um, useful to review track fixity. Is, is low track fixity always appropriate for um, some uh, track forms in, in, in platforms? Are there options to improve fixity if it's a localised problem that's, that, that's presenting itself? And actually projects can think closely about um, what vehicles are actually intended to run on the route and what vehicles do run, and also be challenged, prepared to challenge assumptions. And I believe there was some good success locally with the class 153s, 155s recently. So moving on to level access. Well, the PTI strategy um, published a couple of years ago actually went through and reviewed the different proposals for platform height to be closer to, closer to level access. Um, and what that study did was actually looked at the gauge clearance requirements and, and determined what offset would be required for the different platform heights proposed. What it showed, perhaps un well, definitely unsurprisingly, is that the, the, although you reduce the vertical um, step with increase in platform height, what you do for the need for gauge clearance, you actually significantly increase the, the offset. And what this leads to is actually a, um, quite a large gap for people to traverse. 
So the conclusion was that 915 is about the, the right height at this time. And you can see from the, um, even going up to 945, there's quite a significant increase in track, um, platform offset. What is level access anyway? I mean, the PRM TSI talks about um, a lateral gap of 75 millimetres and a vertical step of, <coughs> of uh, 50 millimetres. Actually, is this level? You've potentially got a step down from vehicle vestibule, vestibule floor to foot step. The horizontal gap between the foot step and the platform edge is 75 mil, um, and potentially another step up at the at the caper. Um, is it level? Is it actually more of a trip hazard to the majority of users? Um, and is maybe opportunity to use gap fillers might be something useful in this scenario. Also, we, truly, we don't truly know what the optimum PTI interface is for different <coughs> user groups that you operate in the railway, adults, adult parents with children, buggies, luggage, etc., um, people with reduced mobility. Um, even the traje trajectory of people's feet differs between different user groups, so actually what might be a comfortable step for some is actually a trip hazard for others and a challenge for others. <coughs> what is level access? Wheel wheelchairs um, require level access, but what does it actually mean? Um, and how do we actually balance the difference between a vertical, um, vertical step and a horizontal gap? A, a small step can be a trip, a large step can be um, a challenge, um, maybe a, a moderate step is, is the right thing to do. But actually what is, has been shown is that actually a, a, a large gap, particularly at our platform heights, can be disturbing for some user groups to traverse. So what we need to do is try, to get, try and get more consistency um, in platform position and door and, and footstep position. And this is something that's going to be incremental over time. <coughs> Seriously, some final thoughts. Work, work to date indicates that 915 remains at the right, right target height, um, particularly for our mixed traffic railway with the vehicles that, that currently operate. What we have tried to do with the new standard is to give a little bit more capability to help projects try and achieve that by adding that positive tolerance in. Maybe a bit of an open question, but maybe I'll go in with vehicles the right thing for, um, for the industry, or should we have more tailored designs for some routes where, with uh, midlife provision for alteration? Actually, with so many platforms out of compliance, the compliance window, how do we fund these modifications? And probably more importantly, how do we make, um, increase the awareness at early stages of projects and programs that actually help projects deliver improvements and actually don't leave projects struggling uh, with, a, with a limited budget to try and put right some pretty significant problems. And actually for the future, maybe it, it, it could go away anyway. Maybe clever, uh, the deployment with um, clever gap fillers, um, vehicle deployable steps and uh, changing floor heights or variable floor heights of vehicles. Maybe the risk can be managed in a completely different way altogether. But for now, it's please keep trying to hit the standard platform position. Thank you very much for listening.